Hello class, today we'll be talking about 2.3 functions. We'll be looking at relations and functions. We'll be looking at domain and range, determining whether the relations are a function, function notation, and increasing, and decreasing, and constant functions. A relation. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. Now, when we talk about a set of ordered pairs, we were talking about x, y. All right. So we're talking about ordered pairs and a function is a relation in which for each distinct value of the first component and of the ordered pair, it exactly there's exactly one value of the second component. So basically, one X goes to one Y, one distinct Y. So if you have one X going to two different distinct Y's or two different Y's, that means it's not a function. So let's look at this example, decide whether the relation defines a function or not. So we have f is equal to um, the ordered pair of 1, 2, negative 2, 4, and we have um, 3, 4. So... Now, we have to look at what we have. So, we have 1 going to 2, negative 2 going to 4, and 3 going to 4. Now, remember, you have one distinct x goes to just one y. So, if we look at this, this should be a what? Function. Now, you may see some of them do a mapping just to kind of show you what it is. You have 1, and you have negative 2, and you have what? 3. Then you have 2, 4. Now, you don't have to write 4 twice. So basically, you have the 1 going to the 2. Then you have the negative 2 going to the 4. You also have the 3 going to the 4, but it's still a function because we're talking about X's, which this represents X's and this represents Y's, they have to go to one distinct Y, all right? So let's look at the next one. So we got G is equal to 1, 1. Then we have 1, 2, 1, 3. And also we have what? 2, 3. So if we, and these are just mapping forms, and you'll see these later. So I got 1, then I have 2. Then for my X, my Y's, I have 1, 2, and 3. So we have 1 going to 1, but I also got 1 going to 2 and 1 going to 3. Then I have 2 going to 3. So therefore, this is not a function because 1 goes to more than one X value, Y value. So mappings. So we just talked about, um, that's the way I describe, you know, when we was talking about the relations. So relations and functions can also be expressed as a corresponding, a correspondence or mapping from one set to another. This is basically what I did to show you that, um, that one relationship, one relation wasn't a function. So basically we went through this already. So just like you see, it's one negative two, three. And if you see, we got one going to two, and we got negative two going to four, and we also got three going to four. But since uh, we don't have one, um, any other y, the x value is going to more than one y value, then it's still a function. So the domain and range. In a relation consisting of the order pairs x, y, the set of all values of an independent variable x is the domain. And for the set of all dependent variables, y is the range. So when we deal with domain, we deal with the x's. When we deal with the range, we deal with y's. So let's look at, the, look at this and we go find the domain and range of this. So when we look at it, the 
range or the domain. Let's do domain first. All right. We look at all the x values. So it'll be three, four, and you don't have to put four twice because it's two fours. And we have six. Then we have what? For the range, we have negative one, two, five, and eight. Now this is the domain and range. Now we know we have four here and four here. Now that means we have two x, we have one x going to two different y's. So this would not be a function. So, let's look at B. So, now we have a mapping. We got 4 to 100. We got 6 to 200, 7 to 200, and negative 3 to 300. Now, since we don't have a, since all the X's goes to one Y, one distinct Y, that means that this is a function. So, it's a function. Now, domain and range. It's already kind of listed, but we're going to do it. So the domain is 4, 6, 7, and negative 3. And the range is 100, 200, and 300. So when you're doing this, just make sure you understand your domains are your x values and your ranges are your y values. Vertical line test. Every vertical line intersects a graph of the relation in more than one point. The relation is a function. So, let's look at some things. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple graphs. And then we'll just go through. So, my first graph will be a linear. My second graph will be a parabola. My third graph will be a circle of some sort. Now, the vertical lines test basically says if I draw a vertical line going through the graph, does it go through the graph more than once? If it goes through the graph more than once, it's not a function. If it goes through the graph only at one point, then it is a function. So for my first one, since this is a linear line, diagonal line anyway, slant line, this is a function. Now, what about this? It's a quadratic, but this one is a function. Now, what about a circle? Now, we drew one vertical line through, and we have two different points. So, a circle is not a function. So, this is all it is asking you to do. Make sure if you have any questions, you send me a message through Microsoft Teams or you email me. So let's look at this. It says identify function, domain, and ranges. Decide whether the relation defines a function, defines y as a function of x, and give the domain. So now, like we just said a few minutes ago, we have y is equal to x plus 4. Now, when we talk about y is equal to x plus 4, we know that that is a linear slant line because we have a what? We have a 
slope, which is going to be 1 over 1. So that means that we're going to have a slant line. So we have a actual have a slope. So let's look at what we got. So we have a slope and we have a y-intercept. So therefore, if we wanted to look at this, so we know that this is a function. And then the domain of, of a linear line like this would be what? Negative infinity to what? Positive infinity. And the range would be the same. It would be what? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, we're only talking about slant lines. All right, when we talk about this, when, we say, when I'm talking linear, in this case, we're talking, I'm talking about slant lines. Now, there are some lines that are not functions, so, but we'll talk about that. And usually those are your what? Vertical lines. Because it doesn't pass the vertical line test, of course. So let's look at this one. Now, when we do this, we have to see what x cannot be. So we have to say x, 2x minus 1. And then we say it's what? Greater than or equal to zero, because it can be zero inside, or, so it can be zero inside, so just keep that in mind. So, let's look. So we have 2x is greater than or equal to 1, so x is greater than or equal to 1 half, when you divide by both sides. Therefore, my domain It's what? One half to infinity for the domain. Make sure you have, if you have any questions about this, you make sure you send me a message through Microsoft Teams or send me an email. So, let's look. So, if we look at what we got, now let's look at, because this is the domain right here. Let's look at the range. Now, the type of function this may be, this is, all right, we call this a, um, One of those radicals. So it's a radical. So we go. It's going to be a partial. All right. And if you if you ever look at the type of graphs you're looking at, you're looking at something like this. So it looks like that. That's what this graph looks like. So let's look at this. Now, when we look at the range. We know that y has to be non-negative because you can't get a negative answer when you take the square root of something because you can't have a negative under the radical. That's why we, when we solved it, we did greater than or equal to zero because you can't have a negative number under the radical because it'll be undefined because we're not dealing in complex numbers right now. So therefore, the lowest number that y could possibly be is zero. So it'll be zero to an infinity. Can't be negative because the fact of the matter is you can't have a negative number in the radical. All right? So make sure you understand that. So now we got y squared. All right? Is equal to. Now, this is a function as well, if, we, if I didn't mention it. All right? This one is a function. Now, y squared, actually y squared looks something like this. Now, just understand that we know that this doesn't pass the horizontal line, I mean the vertical line test, so this is not a function. Just, just off the gate, we know it's not a function. Now, if we look at what we have, 
we know that if we look at the domain, it goes from zero to infinity because it has not been shifted. So zero, zero would be the origin. So since it's laying to the side to the right, that means it's going from zero to infinity. Now, the range has changed because since it's staying on the side, it would be what? From negative infinity to positive infinity. All right. Make sure if you have any questions about this, you send me an email about it. So, decide whether each re uh, relation defines a function and give the domain and range. So, in this case, we know that we can't have zero in the denominator. So, we have to say x minus 1 is equal to 0. So, we got to find what makes x equal to 0. So, we know that is, or the denominator equal to zero. So x is equal to one. So we know in our domain, we cannot include one. So domain is from negative infinity to one, union from one to infinity. All right. So we want to keep that in mind. So now when we think about Y's, Y's can be anything but my range can be anything but zero because if I put zero on for Y, I will wind up getting uh I will wind up getting a contrary answer, which I'll get 0 equal to y, 0 equal to 5, and that's not true. So, we know that if we're looking at range, it'll be from negative infinity to 0, union from 0 to infinity. Now, the union is just a conjunction basically saying, I'm skipping over it, 0, and I'm going to the next number. And what you know is infinite many numbers between 0 and 1, so it could be fractional, it could be whatever else, as long as you include those numbers. Now, it's a variation of the definition of functions. A function is a relation in which, for each distinct value of the first component of the ordered pairs, there is exactly one value of um, component for the second then we have, for the second one, we have a function is a set of ordered pairs in which no first component is repeated. So that means you don't have more than one of the same first component, as we know. Then the third definition would be a function is a rule or correspondent that assigns exactly one range to each distinct domains. So exactly one y to one x, all right? So you got to make sure that you understand that these are different variations of the same um, definition. So when we look at function notation, basically, we're just talking about f of x. So we're going to change y to f of x. So y is a what? Function of x. That's basically what that is. So in this case, we got f of x is equal to 3x minus 5. Now... It's just basically saying we're in function notation. All right? So don't get it fooled. We're in function notation. It's the same as saying y is equal to 3x plus 5 or 3x minus 5. It's the same exact thing. You graph it the exact same way, but we're just using function notation. So let's just say if we was we say y is equal to f of x um, is equal to 3x minus 5, where x is equal to 2. So when we look at it, we're looking at f of 2 because we're plugging in 2 for x. So if we do f of 2, it would be what? 3 times 2 minus 5, so you'll get 6 minus 5, which gives you 1. 
So y equals one represents the ordered pair two one because we we did what we found we we plugged in for x equal to two and then we got y is equal to one. So basically, this is just showing you the name of the function, the function value, and the name of the independent variable, the name of the dependent variable, and what the expression is. Nothing too much. They just wanted to simplify to show you the illustration. So let's look at this. Let's do a couple of these uh, substitution type problems. So we're looking for f of 2. So we've got to use the f of x equals to negative um, x squared plus 5x minus 3. So therefore, we got f, f of 2 is equal to negative parentheses 2 squared plus 5 times 2 minus 3. Therefore, I got negative 4 plus 10 minus 3. And then I have what? So I'm going to have negative 4 plus 10, which is going to be 6 minus 3, which that's going to just give me 3. All right. So your answer would be 3. So now for B, we have to plug it into the G. That's G of A plus 1. So we have G of A plus 1 is equal to 2 times A plus 1 plus 3. So now that just equals to 2A plus 2 plus 3. And that just equal to 2A plus 5. So basically, we just plug this stuff in. Make sure if you have any questions, you make sure you hit me up on Microsoft Teams. So let's look at some more. F of 3. So we got F of 3 is equal to 3 times 3 minus 7. And this is just 9 minus 7, which is equal to 2. Now, for the same pr type of problem, they, this is not something you just solve out. You look and look where x is equal to 3, then you say what your um, what the f of 3 is. So f of 3 is equal to 1, because this is the one where we have 3 in for the x. And then you got 1 for the y, so f of 3, it will equal 1. So keep that in mind. Remember, you always look at f of x. All right? So that's whatever you're plugging in for x. So finding an expression for f of x. Consider the equation involving x and y. Assume that y can be expressed as a function of x, a function f of x. To find the, an expression f of x, use the following steps. Step 1, solve for y. Step 2, replace y with f of x. So it's nothing more to it. You just got to solve for y, then replace uh, y with f of x. So the first thing we have, we have x minus 4, y is equal to x, is equal to 5. So, first thing we'll do is subtract our x to the other side. So, we got 4y is equal to 5 minus x. And now we got y is equal to... Now, I'm going to change, the, change this around because this is going to be x minus... This is going to be x minus 5 all over 4. So, what you do is you have to change f of uh, y to f of x. So I got f of x is equal to x minus 5 over 4. And we're going to be doing f of negative 2. So that's going to be equal to negative 2 
minus 5 all over 4. So we will get what? Negative 7 over 4. So when you do this problem, you want to make sure that you understand what you're actually doing because you want to make sure that when you plug it in, you get the correct answer. All right. That's for f of negative 2. Now, for f of p, it'd be equal to p minus 5 over 4. Now, if you wanted to, you know, change this a little bit, this would just be 1 over 4 times p minus what? 5 over 4. Not hard to find at all. So, increase and decrease in constant functions. Suppose that a function f is defined over an open interval i, x1 and x2 are in i. So f increases on i if whenever x1 is less than x2, f of x1 is less than f of x2. Uh, f decreases if on i if whenever x1 is less than x2 and f of x1 is greater than f of x2. f is constant on i for every x1 and x2 if x1, f of x1 is equal to f of x2. So make sure you understand what you're actually doing here because you need to be able to follow this to understand what you're doing. So let's look at, let's find where this thing is increasing, decreasing, and it is constant. So the first thing we want to look at, we know coming from the left, left to right, we know that this, this thing is decreasing from what? Decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2. Now, once you get to negative 2, it starts to do what? Increase. So it increases. from negative 2 to 1. Now, when you do increase and decrease, you look at the x values when you put, put your actual increase and decrease in. Because what it's saying that is it changes from increase and decrease at that value of x. All right? So now, when you get here, you do what? You are going constant from... 1 to infinity. So make sure when you're doing these type of problems, you make sure you understand what direction you are going. Now, make sure if you have any questions about these problems, you send me a message through Microsoft Teams or you send me an email.